Nevada head coach and first year head coach of the Wolfpack, Brian Polian joining us. And yeah, does the name sound familiar? It should. <laughs> Polian, of course, the son of Bill Polian, who is a former Indianapolis Colts. Big uh, GM, exec, all that good stuff. And uh, for the first time since 2004, Nevada has a new head coach. So here he is, Brian Poley. And first and foremost, welcome to No Static Sports. Good to have you on the Mountain West scene. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Excited. You know, obviously you come from a football background like no other. So what do you bring into this as your first head coaching stint with Nevada? Well, it's, it's interesting. I have life experience that, that uh, frankly, uh, people that don't grow up in the business that that I've grown up in don't have. So people may look at me and say, well, he's 38, he's really young for this spot. And in, in reality, in this day and age, it's not as young as people once thought it was. Uh, but from the time that I was, boy, 13 years old, I was working full-time in football when other kids were had their summer jobs at the putt-putt or the ice cream shop or mowing lawns. I was at the, uh, the Buffalo Bills training camp the entire summer back in the days when training camp was four or five weeks long and you went off to a, a college somewhere and, and, and hunkered down. And that's really uh, in my early teens when I was bit by the coaching bug. And, and then you say, okay, I want to be a coach. Well, I'm, I grew up around Marv Levy and, and later got to work with Don Capers and, and consider Tony Dungy a friend and mentor. And to have access to influences like that have, have really, in my opinion, helped prepare me a little bit for this job. For the record, I worked at Durr Wiener Schnitzel as my first job. <laughs> Ever had a good chili dog? <laughs> I have. I yeah, have. Yeah. I'll tell you what, obviously, Nevada uh, in a transition. You know, Chris Alt brought that pistol. Uh, what do you bring to the table when you talk about Cody Fajardo and, and this offense? Obviously, you lose a horse like Stephon Jefferson the pride of El Diamante in Visalia, but I had to get that shout out in there. But uh, what, what do you bring to the table? What do you like about this team offensively? We'll start with that. Well, the fir first and foremost, we we won't change our identity that, that much. I mean, frankly, the offense has been very, very productive, and, and to change that just for the sake of change would not be very smart. So we will look the same. I think uh, if we're talking from a, a big picture standpoint, uh, I'm just going to be myself, and, and we're, you know, by nature, high energy enthusiastic, passionate about what we do. We're going to have some fun. Uh, the nuts and bolts of it, how will our new staff influence the offense, I think we'll play with a little bit more tempo. We're, we're not going to try and be in the perfect play every time. We're going to try to, to bring some of that Kevin Sumlin, Texas A&M influence where, where we want to play fast. And, and frankly, uh, while I love our running game and, and I embrace it and it's really our identity, um, we're not going to bang our head against the wall either. If there's nine people in the box to try and stop the run, we have to have the ability to get the ball into space out on the perimeter quickly. And, and, and my experience at AM, Nick Rolovich's experience with his run and shoot background, and Jim Hoffer, our assistant head coach, wide receiver coach, and having been a coordinator for a long time running the spread, I think the three of us combined will, will bring some influence into this thing and you, you know be able to get that out in space a little bit quicker. I'm sure you're a good salesman in, in, in recruiting and all that, but why couldn't you bring Johnny Manziel to Nevada? What happened? <laughs> I don't need those headaches right now. As, as, uh, as good as Johnny is, uh, my man brings a circus with him right now that, that I think even Kevin Sumlin rolls his eyes at sometimes. Uh, I really like, I'll tell you what, I think we're, we're, we're pretty solid at the quarterback position. I think Cody's a really good player. I've known him since he was a high school player. Uh, I'm very pleased with uh, the improvement that he's made throwing the football. Uh, he's a very gifted athlete. can run away from a lot of defenders. So uh, I, I feel pretty good about our quarterback. If you can't have Johnny, I like the one that we've got. You know, this is a quarterback league, and that's a bold statement by you. Obviously, Derek Carr, preseason player of the year, was the reigning conference player of the year a year ago. Uh, Brett Smith, uh, obviously David Fells over at San Jose State. I think some people are overlooking Joe South with the big at, at Boise State. I'm no expert, of course. But uh, what, what is, where does Cody Fajardo, you think, rank among these quarterbacks? Because obviously this is a quarterback heavy league. Uh, yeah, it's not fair for me to say where does the guy rank. Frankly, I've been around the league long enough to have earned that opinion. Uh, I know that uh, he's the, for what we run and for the type of guy that we're looking for, I'd choose him. I'm glad that he's our quarterback. And, and I think that he has a different skill set than some other guys. And, and I think people, frankly, uh, 
look at him as just an athlete and don't really appreciate the fact that the guy is a very skilled quarterback. And, and ultimately, uh, you know, if we win enough games, people will appreciate how good he is. And, and if uh, if we don't win enough games, then, then they'll be talking about some other guys because, uh, you know, ultimately as the, as the quarterback, that's his job is to help us win games. Now, with that being said, I'm glad he's on our team. You know, obviously, uh, knowing what your dad has done in the National Football League, how much do you or will you consult with him maybe during the season just to get some perspective on how your season will go, however it plays out? How much do you already uh, kind of grab his advice as you go into this thing? Well, I'll grab his advice often, and really that's nothing new. I mean, I'm in a very unique position that that not only is my dad my hero, maybe one of my best friends, he's also an expert in, in my field, and my entire career I've leaned on him. Now, he's not the only guy I, I talk to, and, and that's not to say that he's not wrong from time to time. And as I've gotten older and a little bit more courageous, I stand up to him more and, and tell him, no, I think you're wrong. But uh, we just spent a week together on vacation at Cape Cod. We talked a lot of football. I, I don't talk a lot of specific X's and O's with him. I talk more big picture, uh, you know, running an organization, communicating with people, practice structure, things like that. Um, I have a, I have a mentor, I have a dad who, in my opinion, should someday be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And to ignore that as a resource or to ignore Marv Levy or Tony Dungy uh, or Kevin Sumlin or Charlie Weiss, for that matter, Jim Harbaugh, to ignore those guys as resources would be silly on my part. Brian Polian joining us. He's the new head coach for the Nevada Wolfpack. And you've been in the big state, in Texas A&M. You've been there on the BCS level. When you look at this conference, the way it stacks up, any doubt in your mind that a team out of the Mountain West could take a BCS spot this year? Oh, there's no doubt in my mind. This is the best non-AQ conference in the country. And frankly, uh, you know, the upper echelon of this league can compete in a lot of other conferences uh, quite well. And, and frankly, it's something that I talk about in recruiting all the time. Uh, you know, if you're a young man on the western part of, of our country, uh, do you want to choose one of the teams in the bottom third of the Pac-12 just so you can say I played in the Pac-12? Or would you rather choose one of the, the, the teams in the upper echelon of the Mountain West and compete for championships? Where, where, where the goal, you know, is to be 12 and 0, and the goal is not to hope to be 7 and 5 and get to a bowl game. I mean, you look at the Boise, you look at, at the, the historical success of Fresno State, uh, Colorado State for a long time under Coach Lubin, Air Force forever has had a tradition of winning. We have fortunately inherited a program that's going to eight straight bowl games. Are you telling me that Duke wouldn't like to go to eight straight bowl games? I mean, Duke played in the Belt Bowl, and Coach Cockcliffe has been hailed as doing one of the great coaching jobs in the country. It's been forever since Duke had been to a bowl game. So uh, I think I think our league, top to bottom, is outstanding. And I would put it up against a lot of other folks. And I think the exposure with now the CBS Sports Network deal, the ESPN deal, the Mountain West Digital Network, uh, I think the rest of the country is going to catch up to, to what it is that we're doing here. And, and I think, frankly, the decision for Boise to stay, for San Diego State to stay, to, to add San Jose and to add Utah State, I think, uh, the administrators, the, the people that run the league, the ADs, the presidents did a fantastic job because I think this league is poised to do great things. You know, you talk, obviously, huge hype for this conference, and I believe in what you're saying. You've sold me already. <laughs> but obviously, you, you you have a great pedigree of coaching. I mean, yet your resume is, stacks up against anybody. Uh, why why come to Nevada? Was there maybe a, a, an, another job out there that you could have waited for in the BCS? Or do you feel like this was a great move for you and for your career, obviously, to be here first? Yeah, I do feel like this was a great move. I couldn't have imagined a better starting point uh, for somebody like me, 38 years old, um, a special teams coordinator. That has been my expertise in, in retrospect. may not be the quickest way to get yourself a head coach each job, but hey, I mean, you are who you are, and, and I was never ashamed of that. Uh, I take a great deal of pride in the way that I came up, but I mean, there are, there are guys my age that take jobs at lower levels 
and take places over that were one and eleven, and it's a complete rebuild. And and you're really, you know, for for guys like that, their next step is a Mountain West job, and then let's see where it takes you from there. But look, I, I'm realistic. I skipped a step. I realized that. And I'm very, I'm very blessed for this opportunity. I'm also taking over for a coach that was uh, a college football Hall of Famer, a legend in our home state, and a place that has been to eight straight bowl games. So, um, you know, the, the standards are going to be high, but that's okay. I'm not afraid of that. We embrace that. We want to be at a place where excellence is the standard. Yeah, no pressure, right? None. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, you know, Fresno State, you're going to be in Fresno. Uh, what is that, November 2nd? Obviously, you know, that is a game that everybody looks at because this is a rivalry between Fresno State and the Wolfpack. Uh, when you look at Fresno State this year, we, we know what's on paper. Well, I got to Can you stack them up against some of the better BCS teams in the nation right now? There's no doubt in my mind that, that Fresno State can go in and not only compete with, but win a lot of games against BCS level competition. And that has been the history of the program. Coach Sweeney, Coach Hill, now Coach DeRuder, it has always been about anytime, any place, we'll, we'll slug it out with you toe to toe. We're not afraid of anybody. And, and that's. You know, when you talk to me as a football, I'm not a West Coast guy, but I'm a football guy. And you say to me, what does Fresno State football mean to you? Hey, we'll take on all comers, and we're not afraid to go toe-to-toe with anybody. And it's always been that way. And, and it's really not changed one bit with Coach DeRuiter. And he and I have some common ties back to some people at Texas A&M and at Nevada, for that matter, where he was an assistant at one time. And, and I have the utmost respect for him and, and the utmost respect for, for where the program's at. Now, that being said, uh, I'm not thinking about November games right now. I'm, I'm thinking about the first one down in Pasadena against UCLA. But, uh, with that being said, I mean, the Bulldog football program's got a great tradition of, of you know, being tough to handle no matter in conference or out of conference. And there's no reason that's going to change this year. You're kind of reading my mind. Uh, obviously, you talk about UCLA. you got Florida State on the schedule. All road games there. Uh, you know, way to throw out the gauntlet at you in your first season. This has got to, I sort of, I sort of say to you, it's got to be fun because you, you got to feel like I'm going to go in there and try to knock off a BCS contender. Is that how you're looking at it? Yeah, I mean, look, look I mean, think about the schedule. Oregon was on the schedule when I got there. I mean, we add Oregon into the mix and it's, hey, good luck. But ultimately, those decisions were made before I arrived. There's no sense whining about them. And, and look, we're not going in uh, to any game with the intention of trying to keep it close. Uh, whether or not we win, you know, we'll determine that on the field on Fridays and Saturdays. But uh, we're going in with the intent to win, uh, and we're going to try to win. We're not going in to try and keep it close. Uh, you know, they they put the schedule together. I got to go play. Yeah, I think. It is kind of uh, unique and fun to think that my first game as a head coach is going to be in the Rose Bowl, a pretty historic place against UCLA, a very historic program. So uh, we're going to go down there and do everything we can to try and win the game. And then, uh, you know, the great lesson I learned from Charlie Weiss at Notre Dame is we, we play with 12 one-game seasons. So, so we're going to take it. It's cliche, but it's it's a smart cliche, and that's we take it one game at a time. And right now I'm only worried about the Bruins, and, and we'll go get ready to play that one. Well, we're in Vegas, as you're very well aware of, and so if you were a betting man, what would you bet on to fill in this blank? The Nevada Wolfpack will uh, be fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, philosophically, yeah. I, I believe that we can win games, we can grind, we can work hard, and we can still have fun doing it. And I think when people watch us on tape, uh, ultimately I want our opponents to look on and fun look at film and say, boy, that team plays hard, they enjoy competing with one another, and they have fun doing it. Uh, you know, what the record's going to be, who knows, but, but I know that we're going to be fun to watch and we're going to enjoy uh, competing with one another and the coaches. And, you know, it was a great lesson I learned from Kevin Sumlin at, at Texas A&M. Uh, sometimes we, we need to be reminded that football's a game, it's played by kids, it's supposed to be fun. So we're going to go compete our tails off, but we're going to have fun doing it. He's Brian Paulian. Fun to listen to. I appreciate you joining me. Best of luck this season. Appreciate the time. Very good. Hey, good chat with you. Thank good luck you. to you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I listen to your dad all the time on ESPN. 30 years of hating the media. Now he's one of the
they all turn around at some point. 